So without further ado, I would like to invite founder and chief scientist of Definity Foundation. Please put your hands together for Dominic Williams. Hey, um, hey everyone. Thanks for coming. Um, this is an amazing venue. One of the best restaurants I've been to, I think, in Hong Kong. So I'm um, very, very pleased to be here. Thanks for coming. Um, ah, that's a good point. I got, like, the mic on my head. <laughs> I don't actually need it. Remarkably, it didn't create an echo, so that's good. Um, so uh, we, we came over about a week ago. Uh, there's a lot happening in Asia. Um, a couple of days ago, we uh, held a meeting with the... Um, to, to bootstrap the ICP Asia Alliance, and uh, the meeting was held with the seven, the heads of seven ICP hubs in Asia, um, which we think are, are going to be incredibly important to the success of the internet computer um, in, in in the region. And and some of them have already been achieving amazing things. Uh, the ICP Hub in Korea recently had a meetup with 800 people, which is, is a record for the ecosystem, which I just think reflects the huge energy in, in, in this space and the, the potential that's here, um, particularly in, in, in Web3. Um, I want to announce there's uh, a $20 million grant being allocated uh, for the ICP Asia Alliance, which reflects how focused we are on, on helping this um, ecosystem scale out, and how bullish we are about the prospects here. So um, without further ado, and I know some of you have seen this kind of material already and, and are very familiar with the internet computer, and uh, others are completely new to the ecosystem. So I'm going to run you through a very, very quick um, overview uh, of the internet computer project. And hopefully, um, this will get you excited. So, um, you know, first of all, when we talk about the uh, inter internet computer, we often describe it as cipher space as cloud. The internet computer, uh, of course, uh, emerged out of the early Ethereum community back in sort of 2015. Um, it was called Definity then. It was conceived uh, as a new version of Ethereum, but it was clear that it would require a lot more R&D. And, and in fact, it took another six years of R&D, hundreds of person years of computer science research and engineering to bring the internet computer in, into production. And it's a very interesting uh, crypto network, a blockchain, because it can actually function uh, as, as a cloud. You can build anything on the internet computer. You can build a social network. You can build an enterprise system. You can build a metaverse, a game, whatever. And the internet computer is really intended as a replacement for traditional IT. The, the general vision. Is, is this, that we're extending the public internet. The internet computer extends the public internet uh, with, with cloud functionality so that people can build on the internet as well as, it, as, well as using it to, to connect um, things. So what, what does that give you? What happens when people build systems and services on the internet? Well, they can uh, become unstoppable, right? and run on the internet and become unstoppable like the internet. Um, they can be sovereign. You know, the systems and services aren't beholden to big tech platforms, and um, they don't have kill switches and, and back doors. Um, they're tamper-proof, and this, is, of course, is very, very important. You know, you don't need a firewall around Bitcoin. There's no firewall protecting Bitcoin. There's no firewall protecting Ethereum smart contracts, and when you build a system or service on the internet computer, you don't need a firewall to protect it because you're building with tamper-proof um, and unstoppable code. Um, you can create Web3 services that are, are DAO-powered and run under the complete control of a community, which, which is unique, and we believe that's the true promise of Web3. Web um, you can create systems that are autonomous, which means that a system exists independently of a person or a company. Um, it might be immutable. It might be some code that nobody can change, that everybody agrees to share, or it could be code that's updated by a DAO. And lastly, and this is a subtle one, um, when you build on the internet computer, you're building on a serverless, a stateful serverless cloud uh, using kind of super modern cloud 3.0 technology, essentially. You're building with 
um, a, an advanced form of smart contracts technology. And one of the things with this is that it simplifies R&D. You can build scalable systems and services on the internet computer for less than you can on traditional IT, like Amazon Web Services, using things like databases and so on. So um, the general vision is that you know we believe um, te tech history arcs towards public networks, and you know you go from private infrastructure to public networks. An example would be the information superhighway proposed by Microsoft and Oracle in the 1990s. You know, peop these big big tech corporations wanted everybody to be connected by this thing called the information superhighway, and it had to be a walled garden. In the end, everybody wanted the, the public internet. Um, we want to replace legacy IT, which is private, closed, centralized infrastructure, with, with the internet computer. Um, quickly, uh, you know, just for, for those that are trying to imagine what is the internet computer, how does it work, uh, it, it's of course a network and it's, it, it's, it's created by this protocol, network protocol, called Internet Computer Protocol, which is by far the most sophisticated network protocol ever devised. So how does it work? Um, independent node providers, and these are a bit like Bitcoin miners, um, own and operate these things called node machines in, in data centers worldwide. It's like standardized hardware. And Internet Computer Protocol um, forms combines these, these node machines to form efficient subnet blockchains. And when it combines these node machines, it pulls them from different node providers in different data centers and different ge geographies and different jurisdictions in a process called deterministic decentralization. But it ensures that there's sufficient diversity among the nodes in a subnet that it remains tamper-proof and unstoppable. And then these subnets host uh, a new kind of smart contract called a canister smart contract. Um, they're very, very different to a traditional smart contract, which can't really store data. These things can store gigabytes. An individual canister smart contract can store uh, 64 gigabytes of memory. And these subnets are combined in, into one stateful, serverless, autonomous cloud. And it has unbounded capacity. So. Um, People ask, well, has, has the internet computer solved the blockchain scaling problem? And of course, the answer is yes. Um, it already solved it probably in 2018. OK, so what is a, you know, what is a serverless cloud? Well, it, it's a single, seamless universe within which uh, any software can call into any other software with permissions. Um, and uh, it doesn't have any, there's no notions of subnets and there's certainly no notions of servers and instances and things like that. So this is one of the simplifying things. And you can use this blockchain to build almost anything. Remember, it's a common misconception in the industry today. When somebody says, built on blockchain XYZ, built on Solana, built on Avalanche, built on a, it doesn't mean that at all. When somebody says, built on Solana, built on Avalanche, it doesn't mean that. It means built on Amazon Web Services using centralized IT, and then the blockchain will be used to store some tokens, right? And it's amazing how many people still have that misconception that built on Solana means built on Solana. It doesn't mean that. It means built on Amazon Web Services and just some tokens on, on the blockchain. So the difference is here, you can use the internet computer to build anything. You can build a social network and it will run uh, from the internet computer. I won't go too much into the, the, the more gory technical aspects, but a, a canister smart contract is a bundle of something called WebAssembly bytecode, which you can create with any computer language like Rust or Motoko or, or, or TypeScript, and, and memory pages that persist. And you literally just write code that data sticks to. And this in itself is, is pretty revolutionary. Um, will interest any developers here. So this is the bigger vision of the internet computer. You know, in, in Silicon Valley, I, I've been in Zurich and Switzerland the last two and a half years, but I was in uh, Silicon Valley in a place called Palo Alto for 10 years before that. And there's a VC called Andreessen Horowitz, which I think their first blockchain investment was into the internet computer in 2018. Um, and their expression is software will eat the world. Software will eat the world. All these kind of old school processes will be replaced by software. So we, we add to that smart contracts will eat software. So blockchain software will, will eat traditional software. Essentially, you know, fast scalable blockchain smart contracts will replace the legacy IT stack. So 
you know, it has these overwhelming advantages. It can't be hacked. It's unstoppable. It's easier to develop with. You know, it reduces R&D costs and admin costs. So, you know, our aim is that smart contracts, you know, eventually eat all this kind of stuff, like databases and operating systems and application servers and many, many other things. And then in the end, our systems and services are just built on uh, blockchain, or particularly the internet computer, which is designed to support that. Um, I mentioned for a moment, uh, you know, I mentioned that you know, there's a misconception that you know, when someone says built on Avalanche, Solana, Polygon, whatever it is, that people are actually building on those blockchains and not just keeping tokens there. So we talk about this as you know, the, the, a transition from Web3 to a sort of real Web3.0. You know, Web3 is really just tokens and NFTs currently. And um, the internet computer enables full stack, full stack decentralization so that the you know, entire um, infrastructure that, that supports um, something like a social network is actually on a blockchain rather than on big tech. So um, to understand how this works, I mean, you see that when, when you interact with a service on the internet computer, you're interacting directly um, with the canister smart contracts, which are creating the user experience themselves by processing HTTP requests. So you're not interacting, if you go to OpenChat, for example, you're not interacting with something that's been built on Amazon Web Services. You're interacting with a user experience that was created, is being created for you by, by these smart contracts th them, themselves. Um, of course, what's happening is, uh, you know, many transactions are being created by the user experience and submitted back to the internet computer. They're signed uh, using a, a user's key transparently, and then the responses from the internet computer are signed too. Um, what's incredible is, this is one of the technological breakthroughs that made the internet computer possible. What's incredible is um, the internet computer has this thing called a master chain key. The, the blockchain as a whole can sign every interaction of unlimited number with this single key. It doesn't matter how big the internet computer grows, how many systems and services are on the internet computer, it's still able to sign every interaction with this single master key. Um, and it's, it's, it's called a chain key. And it's, it's, this chain key cryptography is what enabled, made it possible to create this internet computer. It's a completely new technology. Um, without getting, again, spending too long on these details, but if you want to interact with the internet computer, all you need actually, you don't need a client, you don't need to download the blockchain and reapply it or something like that and interact with a local client. You can interact directly with the blockchain with this key as long as you have this, this key. And it's, it's 96 bytes, and that's it. That's, this, that's the master chain key of the internet computer. And with this sort of magic number, you can you know, interact with the internet computer, verify your interactions aren't tampered with, um, and verify correctness. So uh, autonomy, uh, autonomy uh, is a very important subject in Web3. Autonomy means, does something depend on somebody else, right? Is there an intermediary? And of course, you know, when you think about Satoshi and what he, what he taught us, the aim was to remove intermediaries. And you know, if, you, if you're really building on Amazon Web Services, of course, Amazon Web Services can switch you off. The developer has a username and password, and they can log in and change your data and update the logic and even steal your tokens in practice because they can trick you. Um, the internet computer has two forms of autonomy. The actual network itself, the entire network, runs under the control of a special DAO called a network nervous system. And actually, every update to the network, among other things, every configuration of the network, every update to the network, as well as other kinds of motions, goes through this thing, and here it is, the network nervous system, and you can see that it's directly controlling the various layers of the network. It's integrated into it. And uh, through this, in the first two years, in production, the network nervous system updated the internet computer and the protocol it uses 145 times. So from May 2021 to May 2023, there are 145 upgrades to the internet computer, which, is, as you can probably see, allows it to evolve very, very quickly compared to a traditional blockchain um, and support much more advanced functionality. Meanwhile, if you create a service like OpenChat or Hotonod or one of the hundreds of other services, you can assign this to a DAO too. It's called a service nervous system. And a service nervous system takes over full control of something like a social network that's running on the blockchain. 
And now, that social network isn't running under the control of a, of a company or a CEO or a board or anything like that. That social network is running under the full and exclusive control. It comes into the, the, the equation and somebody will do a transaction on MetaMask. But really, it's all you know, behind the scenes. Right? There's a lot of decentralization theory going on. By default, this is, this is what's happening. And because all these problems you hear about, right, that the Mixit network just got hacked, right? $200 million, that's the biggest one this year. How is that happening? Well, this is how it's happening. It's not crypto. None of this stuff's running on crypto. It's all running on Amazon Web Services. That means a, user, you know, a, a developer has the username and password. They can go in and arbitrarily change user data, arbitrarily change functionality, arbitrarily change the user experience to trick the user into making a transfer. In the case of Mixin, you know, they have them that was in Google Cloud. Somebody just hacked into their Google Cloud account and they had a hot wallet, a hot wallet with most of the Bitcoin in it inside their cloud account and they just stole it. So this is, you know, this, this is the problem and this is where hackers go, sensors go, you know, gatekeepers go, vested interests go, um, sensors go. Ransomware viruses could go, and um, you have to and you have to trust the developers and hope they won't turn turn evil. Trust they won't let a hacker in, and so on and so forth. And trust that the cloud network itself doesn't get hacked. Right? It's a very broken system. It's not really what people under, think of Web three as being. Most people don't understand that it's it's this. So you know, one of the ways the internet computer can help fix that is to just replace everything that's on Amazon Web Services with the internet computer and canisters and put those under the control of a governance system, like a service nervous system. And at that point, you get rid of all these back doors and you get rid of um, the decentralization problem. This is how um, hacks can be completely resolved, almost completely resolved. Okay. But um, let's get quick. Web 3.0 uh, uses, the, I mean, there's lots of different identity systems actually within the internet computer ecosystem, but one of them is called internet identity. You've probably seen people logging into Web3 services using their fingerprint or face ID on their phone. It's, it's basically keeping the private keys inside a, a special chip on your phone or laptop called a TPM. All your phones have it already inside. All your phones have a special chip called a TPM, and your private key is inside that. And you can sign sessions using that. The internet computer is using a protocol called WebAuthn and other open standards. This is what it looks like when you log in. You get an open chat, for example, click on more chat, sends you to internet identity, choose your internet identity. In this case, it's face ID. Just put it in front of your face, and boom, you're inside open chat. What's actually happened is your private key inside the TPM was used to, to sign the session, and now you're able to interact with open chat. So, more than 2 million internet identities created so far, more than 100 uh, Web3 um, services, DApps. Using the technology, and there's a whole lot of other interesting identity systems in the internet computer, but it works differently. There's no real traditional wallet that you see in other systems. Um, Hold or something you should all check out is it's a fully decentralized chat service running under the control of the service nervous service nerve system DAO. Um, it's very cool, and one of the things you'll see is you can send Bitcoin with chat messages. Um, it comes to that, you will change your Bitcoin. You can send somebody Bitcoin in one second and send Bitcoin to a standard Bitcoin address, or you can send it to somebody else's um, uh, chainy Bitcoin wallet. So it's kind of like social fi, right? It's fully decentralized, there's no back doors. Even though this is a chat service, it's also a crypto wallet. Like your, your chat account is a crypto wallet. You can accumulate all kinds of crypto and send it to people with chat messages. Um, hot or not, this is like a tokenized TikTok. Um, this is very cool, demonstrates how you can create uh, virtual economy, and the idea there is people bet on videos that are going to become hot. Uh, people who create viral videos get rewarded with hot tokens, and eventually advertisers buy, have to buy hot tokens to pay to advertise. Um, it's also running under the control of SNS. This thing's very cool, it's called IC, actually it's IC Light is the updated name, it's still got that. So if you look at, I don't know if you can see it, but you can look in the address bar of this uh, Exchange. The exchange itself looks like FTX or something, right? It's a centralized, it looks like a centralized exchange, continuous double auction uh, exchange or order book exchange, right? It looks like FTX, but in actual fact, it's not centralized at all. It's a smart contract. It has a smart contract, and you can see the ID. And this entire user experience 
is created by the Canister smart contract itself. So you get end-to-end -end security. And uh, this is created by a team in China. Once they finally they've got a root okay here and uh, use the liberalization to have a moment to you know, um, put it under control and down and be completely transparent, no back doors, no way anyone can steal anything. Every update to the logic of the exchange will transparently pass into the government system. Um, so, you know, I mean, ha have a look around. There's lots of people trying to, you know, make this transition from Web 2 to true Web 3. And today, it's only possible on the internet computer. It's only possible on the internet computer. There is no blockchain on Earth other than the internet computer that's actually capable of storing large amounts of data and serving user experiences where you can actually build, uh, you know, some kind of social network or, or financial exchange. That's just a simple fact. Um, and invite everyone to look a bit more deeply into what's going on. Um, NGOs and governments, um, yeah, so we're doing some traditional enterprise stuff. Uh, this is Origin, uh, working with Feather Italy, and uh, so people the, the Made in Italy, Kymark, um, that whole system, the supply chain tracking side is happening on the internet computer. Um, Multi-chain, uh, the internet computer is natively multi-chain. This derives from its chain key capabilities. So in the same way the blockchain can do special signatures to later interact, it can also make signatures on other blockchains and magical cryptography. Internet computer can create transactions on any other blockchain on Earth without having a private key. A private key, in a sense, is the blockchain itself. Um, and we're going to see a demonstration of this uh, incredible technology later on. So anyways, I mean, there's this thing called chain key Bitcoin, which is a kind of special thing because there's a, there's a canister small contract on the internet computer that contains the entire Bitcoin UTXO set and uh, enables it to support this, this thing called chain key Bitcoin, it's like a Bitcoin twin. And the nice thing is, that, you know, once you've created a you've got Bitcoin twin, you can send it with one second finality at almost zero cost. And that's, that's what people are sending with chat messages on open chat. But you can also send chain key Bitcoin directly to a Bitcoin address, at which point it becomes normal Bitcoin again. There's no bridge. There's no insecure bridge. It's just magic cryptography. So uh, recently, uh, uh, there's a city called Lugano in Switzerland, a very forward-thinking city, and they've got this thing called the My Lugano app. They've created a local microcurrency called Luga. And now they support, in addition to the Luga, they also support this thing on the internet computer. It's Bitcoin, to end chain key Bitcoin. And I don't know, a few weeks ago, I was in, in Madonna, I was actually able to pay for a coffee using chain key Bitcoin. Um, I think that illustrates how the internet computer has roles beyond just directly hosting social networks and things like that, but it can also act as a layer two for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other chains. Um, what else? We're almost done. A new way to build, uh, well, look, here. so look here, here's something, these, these are some points there that are worth uh, taking account of. Like, this is a new way to build. Like, software and systems and services are the digital foundations of our societies. Everything runs on software. Social life runs on software. Social media. Industry runs on software. Like supply chains, inventory management, and HR systems, and customer you know, relationship, it's all software, right? And so if you provide a new way to create those digital foundations, it's actually quite a profound thing. So you, you can notice some stuff here, some big changes, right? All these things we showed, I just showed you, like, you know, open chat, you know, um, Polymer, or, or, or the exchange, or federally, or, or, you know, the, 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 the chain key system. There's no cloud involved. There's no Amazon Web Services involved. It's not like Amazon Web Services is supported. And there's no database service. They, these things are just built entirely from the canister smart contracts. The network, the public network, the internet is becoming the stack. Actually, a very profound thing. Um, secondly, this is crazy. There are no firewalls, no scene logging, no, no security paraphernalia. Like, I mean, imagine, can you imagine if you built an internet service like OpenChat, a chat service with, you know, 100,000 users who are keeping crypto inside? and you didn't have a firewall, imagine what would happen. It would be like mixing but a hundred times over, right? The hackers would come and they'd suck all the crypto out of the service. They'd probably start deleting people's chat messages and doing other bad stuff. So this is an absolute revolution. Like these services, these internet services, which are storing crypto inside, they don't need a firewall anymore, right? They're not built on traditional tech, and they don't need a firewall anymore. Um, 
piece here I mentioned earlier on, like you know, how, how this technology can reduce costs, right? These, these services were built with uh, small by small teams. By small teams. Like open chat, there's a three core developers behind it. But if you go there, you see it's incredibly sophisticated. Uh, and they're adding new features all the time. I think the latest one's called communities. You can use, enterprises can use it as an alternative to Slack and Definity actually plans to migrate to it at some point. Um, so these are big, big changes. And with respect to some of these things, like, you know, actually the world spends five trillion dollars a year on IT. Five trillion dollars a year on IT. Thirty-six percent of that is IT personnel. It's one point eight five trillion dollars a year on IT personnel. It's an unimaginably large number. And if you can reduce the complexity involved in building systems and services by 75%, say, if you could do it for all of them, that's $1.35 trillion in potential savings. I actually believe that the internet computer can, can reduce complexity by a lot more than 75%. And I think that um, gives, gives uh, a view into the actual practical utility beyond like speculation and tokens and NFTs that the internet computer provides. It's focused on delivering real-world utility, and that's how it defines itself. Um, lots of other costs it addresses. The biggest one is probably the software. So the world's going to spend um, $912 billion in software licenses just this year. But guess what? When you build an internet computer, you don't need traditional software anymore. You don't need an Oracle database. You don't need the application server. You can just build and cast to smart contracts on a public network, on the internet itself. Um, and of course, I mean, just think of cybersecurity. The world's going to spend, uh, sorry, last year, the world spent $172 billion on cybersecurity. So isn't it a fantastic thing that you can create, you can create uh, uh, even something like a messaging service, a social network where people keep to tokens? People keep pretending you don't need a firewall anymore, it's temperatures. Contrast that to a much smaller thing like a mix-in service that gets you know, hacked just because it's on Google Cloud. These are big, big changes. So we're done. Uh, one of the things you're going to see as well is that uh, the technology particularly is going to be used as a lot of people around the world and governments that are looking at this because they want to build sovereign networks. So if you build government infrastructure on Amazon Web Services, like, it's an American big tech corporation. Of course, there are back doors. A lot of your data is getting sucked out and put into a Palantir database in the NSA, right? And um, there are kill switches. If they wanted to, they could switch the stuff off. So there's a lot of uh, countries around the world, particularly Europe at the moment, that are looking for ways to create kind of cloud uh, next generation cloud services which don't depend on, on you know, uh, foreign companies and uh, big tech corporations, sorry, for foreign countries, big tech corporations. And so this, you know, the internet computer provides a way to, to build without single sign-on, without cloud services, without closed source software, and so on. Lastly, I'll just mention AI. And AI is going to be absolutely huge in, in Web3. Anybody that tells you that AI isn't going to be at the heart of Web3 doesn't, doesn't know what they're talking about. Look, if you go and you talk to TikTok and you say to TikTok, hey, what kind of company are you? Are you, are you a social media company? TikTok will say, we're not a social media company. TikTok is an AI company. When you're using TikTok, you're talking directly to a, a neural network, which is feeding you content that you like. That's why it's so sticky. That's why it's so enjoyable. So in the future, of course, a lot of content in things like the metaverse and games, web three versions, will also rely on AI. What I can tell you is um, there's already a large language model, a very primitive one, running on the internet computer as a smart contract. right? That's pretty cool. I think in, you know, the internet computer is going to support models that run as smart contracts on the internet computer, also models that you know, maybe run off the internet computer where such a high degree of trust isn't required and they're just doing content ranking and things like that. Um, but again, you know, and you hear a lot about AI and blockchain. There's no other blockchain in the world that can run an AI model, period. Impossible. Like today, Blockchains can't even, other than the internet computer, can't even store a single phone photo. You cannot store a phone photo. Imagine, you take a photo of your phone, that's going to be stored in Amazon Web3 or IPFS, which is Amazon Web3 behind the scenes, right? So this is, you know, reflects, I think, just the general uh, pace at which the internet computer is developing and our willingness just to kind of push into all the areas where 
uh, Web3 needs to be to really unlock the, the, the true potential of what it can do. Um, the mission, of course, of the internet computer, what is it we're trying to do? Um, we're, we're basically trying to enable the reimagination of you know, all, hu all humanities um, uh, systems and services um, through full stack decentralization, right, from, from the internet computer. Um, something else, I mean, if you look at the, it's actually a bit down, it's about 200,000, but with the internet computers processing about 200,000 Ethereum equivalent transactions a second. So if you actually calculate the amount of instructions being executed um, by the internet computer as blockchain transactions, uh, it's processing about 200,000 Ethereum equivalent transactions a second. Um, so that's a stunning number. Uh, Definity, obviously, I, I don't have, I don't have that. Many of you already know this, but you know, it's the biggest R&D operation in blockchain has been since 2018, uh, headquartered in Zurich, um, but, but we have people worldwide. Zurich HQ has about 140 people. Um, huge numbers of research papers, citations, and things like that have been earned by, by, by the community. Um, this uh, just occurred. Um, ICP Asia um, launch event, and um, we've heard about the ICP accelerated too. So we're looking to work with teams in, in the region. Also, push forward centralized control, giving ICP hubs as much autonomy as possible to get as much growth as, as we possibly can. All right, so anyway, thank, thanks, thanks.